really what extreme close-up means, I'm in that character's head. What is going on in that character's head? So that's why I want to be extreme. If I'm in, a, if I'm more medium, in a, like a two shot, then I am part of the conversation as the audience. I'm the imaginary person who's part of that conversation. My name is Roxanne Messina Captor. I am a director, writer, producer. I work both in film and TV as well as te as well as theater. Um, I started as a professional ballet dancer at the age of 12, and I was also a child performer in Chicago. I was with the Harkness Ballet, with Bejart. I did a lot of Broadway shows, uh, both as a dancer and a singer actress. And then I started directing and choreographing in theater, which led me to going out to Los Angeles and working with Gene Kelly and Francis Coppola. And after working with Francis, that led into work doing more film and television. Um, I've been Emmy nominated for one of my projects and I have been on the executive side as one of the founders of Turner Network Television. I was the executive director of the San Francisco International Film Festival and Film Society. I took them up 40% and brought in a lot of celebrity guests for that. Um, a lot of my film work has been, it, some of the projects are still on HBO, Showtime, Lifetime. Uh, I had a series that was sort of a breakout at the beginning uh, on a Latin family called the Trujillos that we developed at ABC and Disney, and, uh, but it didn't go, which is not unusual. And uh, so I think, oh, and I am a Chevalier de Order of Arts and Letters, meaning I was knighted by the French government for my work in the arts, and primarily with French film. And I have had films in the Cannes Film Festival and in the film market. I teach. I'm an educator, so I teach at uh, Santa Monica College, and I've taught at Emerson LA and Cal Arts and UCLA. So I love mentoring younger people and people who are new to the entertainment business, whether it doesn't matter about their age. So I really enjoy it. Can you tell us a little bit about your upcoming project, Pearl? Oh, yes. <laughs> Uh, Pearl is a project based on a portion of Pearl Buck's uh, life story, and Pearl Buck was a, a Nobel Prize winning authoress as well as Pulitzer Prize winning authoress. She grew up primarily in China as a missionary wife and daughter, and uh, during that time she started writing, and mainly because she had a child that had um, mental handicaps and she needed, she wanted to get the child in the Vineland School here in New Jersey, and uh, she needed the money for that school, and that's what started her impetus of writing. And she really was not supported by her, her husband or her father, who her father said, oh, are you still writing those little stories, Pearl, when she got the Pulitzer Prize? So um, during the time there was the Nanking incident, which was when uh, there was, Chiang Kai-shek came in and there was a huge war in China and the missionaries had to escape to Shanghai. And when she's teaching at the university in Shanghai, she meets uh, Zhang Yimou, who's one of the Byron of the East. And they had an amazing relationship that was uh, a love relationship as well as a um, blossoming in her world, in her career. So that's what was her impetus. To the, what happened with her with him gave her the impetus to write The Good Earth which was all about her time with the peasant. She really was known as someone who understood the soul of the Chinese peasant. So it's been a passion project for me for quite a while. We have all the approvals from the Chinese government. They have flown me to Beijing on a number of times. China Film Group is attached. Um, and we're put, putting together the other portion of it. And a uh, creative artist agency is working with me now on uh, who's going to play Pearl. So it's out to Naomi Watts at this moment. All right, so um, Alicia and I, Roxanne, have a mutual friend, Pat Addis, who is a Broadway producer. And Pat was out in Los Angeles staying at another mutual friend of mine, um, it's home in Malibu. And they put together a dinner party, and, and Pat, who's always pulling people together, said, you've got to come, you've got to meet my investors. So that's how we met, how Alicia and I met. And then she, we talked about what she's doing here, and I said I was going to be here doing some uh, research and some s location scouting for the Pearl Buck Project, and also going to New York for some meetings. And she said, well, would you come and do a workshop? And so that's how we met. And so that's sort of the beginning of a really nice relationship. And 
as far as networking goes, that's kind of what it's all about, you know. And I just said in the lecture, if you, you know, in Los Angeles, they'll say uh, you get your jobs on the tennis court, not in the audition. So the more you're out there, the more you're meeting people, the more you're getting people to know who you are. I talked about how when TV's fast and you lose a, an actor for the day, you might, the AD, the assistant director, might have a cousin, a friend, or whatever who ends up getting the part. So the more you're out there and know people, that is really probably 60% of the game, at least. It's over 50%. The truth of the business is you have to always weigh the business with the creative. So you've got to keep your craft going at the same time you're working the business. And part of working the business is not just sending out pictures and resumes, uh, but it's getting out there, meeting other actors, doing other classes, getting your work seen, meeting other people, and however you can do that is the way you're going to start getting work. You're not going to get work by sitting in your apartment. So classes, plays, student films, whatever you can do to get out there. And I think uh, Alicia, what she's doing is really emphasizing how important that is. The one-on-one, -on -one, there's workshops done both in Los Angeles and in New York, and I know Alicia's doing them here, that bring in individual casting people or individual directors or individual producers that are working on projects, and that one-on-one -on -one is invaluable. So that's one of the ways I've gotten work that way, and I know a lot of people who have gotten work that way. After getting to work with some of the talent and being a close associate with Alicia Payback, how did today inspire you? Well, first of all, it, this may seem minor, but the facility itself is spectacular. I mean, and then talking to Alicia and all the, uh, all the things they provide for their students and for the people they manage and agent is spectacular. I mean, it's just not done anywhere else. So uh, they have a really full uh, center here, which really applies all the different areas that need to be applied for anyone who wants to try to have a career. And I think they're very passionate, too, about uh, the people they're working with. And they also, um, you know, are able to get those, the, what, what they're training, they're able to get those things. And they go beyond. She told me they, get, they do free headshots. That's unheard of. I don't know anybody who does free headshots. That's really amazing. Out of all your amazing accomplishments, what project was your personal favorite? Ooh, that's a tough one because I love theater as much as I love film. So, and then I also did some great projects as a performer that I really enjoyed doing. Uh, probably on the film side, I'd say there's two, Home Sweet Homeless, which was nominated for an Emmy because it was a story about a woman who was a working mom and got walking pneumonia and her, uh, she lost her job and her and her three sons lived in their car for six months. And what do you do when the check stops? That's what it was about. And this was, you know, he told his girlfriend he didn't like her because he couldn't afford to take her to prom. Um, what do you do with the family dog? So, and when we premiered it, we premiered it at the shelter that was helping all these people. And all, quite a few of the women came up to me and said, you told our story, you told it absolutely truthfully. And we now have a check from this center that we can go. And then the other one that I think I was really passionate about was originally called A Clean Kill, but then when Lifetime bought it and premiered it in February Sweeps, uh, they changed the title to Her Married Lover. And that was a thriller, and it was a Rashomon story, so you never really knew to the final frame what really happened and who was in it. And Daniel Benzali was in it, and he's an amazing actor to work with. And on the, the performing side, I think, working with Gene Kelly and Coppola and One from the Heart, and the Broadway shows with uh, with Fosse and Tommy Toon, those are those were all remembrances. If you could time travel, would you travel to the past or the future, and what would you do? I would definitely go to the past, and it would be the turn of the century around the 1900s, sort of that, I want to wear those clothes they wore in My Fair Lady, and um, I would <laughs> I would definitely be in a royal court as a courtesan. <laughs> what three pieces of advice would you give to someone new to the industry? Perseverance, <laughs> persistence, and discipline. 
if someone was writing about you 100 years in the future, what would be the legacy that you'd want to leave behind? She worked with great passion. She worked with great love. And uh, hopefully, every project somehow touched people in a way that changed their thinking process or changed their lives or changed their souls. What an amazing day today was. While out in LA a couple of weeks ago, I was able to go out for our opening of Vanya Sonia Mosh and Spike directed by David Hyde Pierce, which is a show that I'm happy to be a part of that won the Tony this year for best play. I was invited to a dinner party in Malibu and I didn't know whose party it was. I had no idea who was gonna be there except for my mentor, Pat Addis, who got me involved in the Broadway scene, telling me I have to be at this dinner party. There are so many amazing people for me to meet. Now, being that I haven't been out to LA in a while, I was kind of torn because I wanted to go see the sights, but I knew if she told me it was important for me to be there, I had to go out there. Rented a car, drove down to Malibu, and I met somebody very interesting there. Um, her name is Roxine Messina Captor, and the fact that she is Francis Ford Coppola's protege, which right there is just beyond amazing, um, she also helped to start Turner Network. Uh, she danced with Gene Kelly. She was in one of my favorite movies of all time, Xanadu. Um, she danced with Baryshnikov. This woman has done everything, in addition to being Emmy nominated and being a top filmmaker, in addition to running the San Francisco International Film Festival. I was astounded that these people even exist, nor was I even allowed to go to a dinner party of that type of level. Um, to go to a dinner party on that level and not have your website, not have you know cell phone pictures, but to just have your core belief of this is what I do and I would love, I would be so honored if you would ever come out here and do a workshop. The fact that she's here today and meeting people that I, I, I can't even imagine ever getting a chance to meet her without knowing somebody that introduced us. Um, we have aspiring actors and models and people looking to get into Broadway and theater. The fact that they have a chance to sit down with somebody of that type of caliber, all from a dinner meeting in Malibu, it, it leaves me speechless. Um, today, she had the pleasure of interviewing some of our talent, auditioning some of our talent. Some of our talent finally got to do their monologues in front of somebody on that type of level. I'm so excited because I have no idea where today's going to lead to. Um, but we're really excited to have her, especially since we're opening up an office in Los Angeles for our Women's Empowerment Summit. She's going to be one of our headliners. And um, it just goes to show that you know, with a little bit of perseverance, a little bit of you know, persistence, you can get anything done, even at a dinner party in Malibu. You can make dreams happen.